The Intel i9-12900K is one of the most powerful CPUs you can buy, and today we're going to do everything in our power to change that. But before we strap the i9 into our crudely built waterboarding device, it's time for a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video sponsor is back due to popular demand, and it's none other than Linode. Linode is a Linux-based cloud computing and web hosting service that offers multiple products to manage cloud storage, websites, databases, game servers, Kubernetes, and they can even handle whatever computational load you can imagine. Also, if you value good customer support, which you should, Linode is one of the best in the business. I mean, look at how happy these two are with their service. If all of this sounds good to you, sign up to Linode using the link in my description below to get a 60-day, $100 free credit. Thank you, Linode, for sponsoring today's video. As always, before we whip out the bamboo orifice poking, we need a good baseline. Now for our baseline, we're starting off with the new NZXT N7 Z690 motherboard. NZXT sent one over for a video and I was like, this is a perfect opportunity to use it. This N7 should have a good enough power delivery to get a solid baseline performance reading out of the 12900K. And then we're also going to be using a dual channel kit, 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 3600 megahertz, and the AIO is real beefy. It's a 360 millimeter Corsair AIO, which should again be able to handle the 12900K well. And then finally, in terms of the graphics card, we're using a 3080 Ti just so that we, you know, push the 12900K to the limit. Now, straight off the bat, we have quite a happy CPU. It's drawing about 130 watts. It's relatively cool. It's not having to work too hard. And we're getting a core frequency of about 4.9 gigahertz. And it's all running very well, which honestly, I don't really like the look of. So let's start the first phase of our kneecapping. Now the first torture prong we're going to use for today's video is going to be to swap the motherboard out to something a bit less appropriate. And I think this is a good bet, which is the loseriest looking LGA 1700 motherboard I could find, and it's an Asus Prime H610M. Now for a little loser motherboard, despite the lack of cooling, it actually doesn't have the worst looking power delivery. We've still got eight phases, so let's drop that CPU in here and see what just the motherboard change does to the performance. Okay, so now we've got it installed in what I like to call the one some high end components in a giveaway configuration. So let's see what this does. Now I have barely been playing and we're already seeing the CPU throttle quite aggressively. See, it, it jumps between 3.2 and 4.9 gigahertz. So yeah, I, I don't think that power delivery is having a particularly good time at the moment. Although I have an idea because well, I haven't had a fan blowing onto the power delivery, which is a bit unfair considering that we're using an AIO. We don't have like an air cooler blowing onto the power delivery. So let's give it a bit of airflow and see how much that helps. Whoa, it's immediately stopped throttling. The moment I aimed the fan onto the power delivery, it just stopped slowing down. So moral of the story is have just a bit of active airflow over the power delivery on your motherboard. Now, we don't want to fix it, so we are gonna remove the fan for the rest of the testing, just to really, just to really pile on. And now with the motherboard crapified, let's do the RAM. I think dropping our RAM speeds from 3200 megahertz, which is the fastest RAM speed supported by H610 motherboards, down to 2133 megahertz is a good place to start when it comes to our RAM kneecapping, just so that we can see how 12th gen Intel responds to suboptimal memory configurations. Oh damn, we're really starting to lose frame rate now. Now despite the reasonable reduction in average frame rate going to 2133 megahertz on the memory, but what I find the most interesting about these results is that the 1% 
and lows didn't change much going from 3200 MHz to 2133 MHz, which is unusual. Usually when you start screwing with the CPU's memory configuration, the 1% lows are where you see a big difference. So I find that pretty interesting. It seems like the 12900K does not like you messing with its memory configuration. And at this point, I think the next step is probably very predictable. Yeah. Uh, uh. There we go, that should do the trick. Whoa, 12th gen Intel does not like it some pre-built memory configuration at all. We've lost a lot of frame rate now. Just remember, earlier in the video, we were well over 200 frames per second, and now we're, we're not anymore. Um, yeah, this ain't, this ain't going great. And obviously the fact that we've lost half our RAM doesn't help either. So clearly memory bandwidth is extremely important when it comes to 12th gen Intel CPUs. Um, so let's take it even further. So with this little H610 motherboard, for some reason, you have the option to drop the RAM speed down to 800 megahertz, which is solid DDR2 territory. So let's do that. A few moments later. Okay, never mind. Apparently the motherboard's a liar because the slowest speed I could get to boot was 1333 megahertz. Again, for some reason. So let's use that. Damn, it's actually getting kind of sad now. The 12900K and 3080Ti have been pretty effectively neutered at this point. We just have about 25% of the performance left that we started with. And remember, we haven't even switched any cores off on the CPU. In fact, the motherboard's power delivery isn't even overheating anymore. This is all just due to memory configuration. And at this point, there's just one thing left I wanna try. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any terrible coolers that mount to LGA1700, so we are gonna have to improvise a little bit here. But luckily, gravity is socket agnostic, which does help quite a bit. And that is why I'm gonna use this little Athlon cooler. Yes, look at that. Uh, it does not have any particularly obtrusive mounting, which means we can just kinda rest it on the CPU like that, and obviously we'll make sure that there's there's decent contact with thermal paste and stuff, but we'll just rest it on there like that, and then hope that nothing explodes. Nice, now we've got the full-blown Dell configuration going. I'm using Noctua NTH2, which behaves quite similarly to super glue, in fact, and I've also removed the mounting hardware so that nothing touches anything metal. Um, yeah, I, I think that's gonna be okay. Oof, that hit 100 real fast. Yeah, come on, at least throttle, like just do something to try and prevent catastrophe maybe, I don't know. I'm confused, why is it running, if anything, better than it was with the better cooler? Like, what is going on? The 12900K is like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Do you know what, what situation I really thrive under? A hundred degrees Celsius. Like, what? It's been a while now, and it's just fine. The 12900K is running like there's nothing wrong. I don't know why I keep being surprised by how unfazed Intel CPUs are running just pegged at 100 degrees Celsius. Apparently, they were designed to run on Mercury with no problem. Uh, the planet, not the metal. And with that, over the course of this video, we've seen quite the regression of performance going from the base configuration all the way to the Dell configuration. Most, if not all of which, was due to the memory, which just shows if you've got a 12th gen Intel CPU, give it a decent memory configuration, otherwise you're gonna pay the price. Which brings me neatly to the end of the 12900K bamboo orifice poking. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel and maybe consider watching another video. A suggestion will pop up in a second, and until the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.